Hey everyone, and thank you for watching. I hope you're doing well as we endeavor through another week of social distancing. I've seen a lot of people outside trying to get some fresh air on walks or bike rides. You know, just a few days ago, my family and I, we rode our bikes to Bahama Bucks to get some snow cones. On the way home, we caught up to two cyclists with real flashy bikes. Now you need to know three important details before I finish this story. One, these guys had bikes worth more than my car. Two, I was pulling my daughters in a bike trailer. It's about 60 pounds right there. And three, none of that mattered because I had to race them. So while I'm proud to admit that when the light turned green, I was able to keep up with both of them. I am less proud of the fact that when we took off, we just kind of left uh, my wife, Marianne, about a quarter mile behind us. And uh, my two girls were not happy about it. You know, it kind of made me think, have you ever read what Paul says about racing? In 1 Corinthians 9, 24, he writes, Do you not know that in a race, all the runners run, but only one gets the prize? Run in such a way as to get the prize. You know, I love this because it forces us to be intentional. We have to seek excellence. Whatever you do, work heartily as for the Lord and not for men, Paul says in Colossians 3.23. We have to work at this with our whole heart. We've got to give the best we have. Another important thing that we can take from that is that we've got to take risks. We have to be willing to risk failure for success. Have you ever wondered what separates first place and second place? You know, I think first place is actually the biggest loser. They're willing to lose more sleep training. They're willing to lose more time practicing. They're willing to lose more things in order to get the one thing that matters most. Consider Paul's words in Philippians 3, 8. What is more, I consider everything a loss because of the surpassing worth of knowing Christ Jesus, my Lord, for whose sake I have lost all things. I consider them garbage that I may gain Christ. You know, I want you to see a video that I think really illustrates this in a bit of an extreme way. For those of you not familiar with competitive cycling, these guys are racing bikes that cost um, thousands of dollars for hundreds of miles. And one of the most prestigious races uh, is the Tour de France. You know, just to finish the 21 day race is a lifetime achievement for many. To win a single race during the 21 days, an even greater feat. And for the single rider who finishes the 21 days with the fastest time, glory and renown awaits him. So I want you to watch this clip of racer Philippe Gilbert. He's leading the race and he's got more than a minute ahead of everyone else. He's racing down this mountainside, taking great risks in order to make sure he keeps the lead in hopes of finishing in first place. Philippe Gilbert. Well, Gilbert's racing off this mountain, of course, onto the slopes of the Col de Monte uh, to follow that. And that is a seven kilometer climb. Whoa, oh, no. steady on. Oh, goodness gracious. Oh, well, uh... Kind of crazy, right? Fortunately, Gilbert was able to get back on his bike and he finished the stage. Although, due to a lingering injury from that crash, he had to drop out of the race and was unable to finish. What's crazy to me is how much these guys and countless other people are willing to risk in order to win, to get the prize. Those cyclists will race down something similar to Mount Evans or, or Pikes Peak at speeds close to 60 miles per hour on tiny little wheels. Paul reminds us that these competitors, they spin their wheels to win a prize that will inevitably fade and wither. But for the Christian, for those uh, Jesus has called to be his followers, we strive for excellence and honor in everything we do. We take risks and sacrifice anything for the greater prize of gaining Christ. This is our calling, and our reward is an internal inheritance, an imperishable crown, Paul calls it. See, this is the kind of striving that I want to demonstrate to my neighbors, to my family, and my friends. This is the kind of purpose I want to live my life for. You know, I know some of us, you know, the idea of taking risks sounds, well, risky. But I feel like the greatest risk we take is when we choose in action. How many people's souls are we risking to the fires of hell because we won't share the love of God's grace and warn them of the penalty of sin? 
You see, we take risks every day and God wants us to be intentional with these risks. You know, these are risky times we live in. Wondering if the, the last thing we touched at King Supers might be contaminated or, or if this trip to Home Depot is really worth it. But let us not forget the greatest risk we can take is the same one Jesus did so many nights ago in the Garden of Gethsemane. When Jesus prayed, not my will, but yours be done. You know, friends, I want it to be said of me when I die that, that Scott risked everything. He risked everything he had to be the best husband, to be the best fa father, to be the best follower of Jesus he could be. That I tried to be like the one who wins the race in every area of my life. That I tried to be first place in every place. You know, I pray that you will choose to do the same and never lose sight of the imperishable crown that is already yours to claim. Friends, this is such exciting news. Run the race as the one who wins the prize. Don't get caught up in, in how fast the next guy is going or how fast this person's going. Just give everything you have. Be intentional. Be willing to take uh, calculated risks for Christ, for the, for the cause of gaining Jesus. And know that you're doing all of this for a crown that will never wither, an eternal inheritance that's yours, that's ours in Christ Jesus.